Imagine stepping outside your cave and feeling your breath crack into snowflakes before your eyes. Picture mountains of ice taller than skyscrapers, glaciers grinding continents into dust, and winds so fierce they could peel your skin off like a banana peel. Welcome to a time when the entire planet hit the freeze button and humanity clung to life by the tips of our fingernails. I'm Grack Earthshaker, and today we're plunging into the chilling depths of prehistory. We're counting down the top five phases of the Ice Age, those brutal chapters, when the world literally froze over threatening every living thing. From the first ice advance that locked Europe in doom to the final bitter snap that nearly erased our species, this is how our ancestors survived against the odds. In this examination of Ice Age severity, we move through five successive phases, starting with the earliest glacial onset and advancing toward the abrupt return of near-glacial conditions known as the Younger Dryas. Our approach is straightforward for each phase. We document the principal climatic shifts, changes in average global temperature, the expansion or contraction of continental ice sheets, and corresponding sea level fluctuations, and analyze how these factors would have affected the daily lives, migrations, and survival strategies of early human communities. The first phase, the Pleistocene onset approximately 2.58 million years ago, was triggered by subtle variations in Earth's orbital eccentricity and axial tilt. As these orbital parameters shifted, the planet's heat balance tipped toward cooling. Over several thousand years, mean global temperatures fell by roughly 3 to 4 degrees Cs, allowing massive ice sheets to form over high-latitude land masses. In North America and northern Eurasia, ice advanced steadily, carving the landscape and lowering sea levels by more than 100 meters. For the hominins of the time, this transformation meant that familiar grasslands and river valleys became vast, frozen plains. Food resources that had once been abundant in temperate zones grew scarce or migrated southward, forcing groups to adapt by altering their foraging routes, modifying toolkits for hunting cold-adapted megafauna, and seeking seasonal refuges where open water and edible plants persisted. The second phase, the mid-Pleistocene transition between 1.25 and 0.7 million years ago, saw the pattern of glacial-interglacial cycles change markedly. Previously, ice ages and intervening warm periods had followed a roughly 41,000-year rhythm in response to precession and obliquity cycles. However, during this transition, the period lengthened to about 100,000 years. Consequently, each glacial period deepened and each interglacial interval shortened. Ice sheets in North America nourished by these longer cold spells grew thicker and more extensive, reaching farther into lower latitudes. The extended duration of severe cold impacted resource availability forest biomes retreated, replaced by tundra or steppe vegetation, and the geographic range of certain animal species contracted. Human ancestors responded by developing more advanced lithic technologies, sharper blades, specialized scrapers, and by constructing more substantial shelters, often within caves or rock overhangs, to withstand prolonged exposure. They also experimented with hearth maintenance, transporting embers, and preserving fire for longer durations to maintain warmth in increasingly inhospitable environments. Phase 3 The Last Glacial Maximum roughly dated to 26,000-19,000 years ago represented the peak of Ice Age severity. Then, ice covered approximately one-third of Earth's land surface. Northern Europe, Siberia, Canada, and parts of the United States lay beneath ice sheets up to three kilometers thick. Average global temperatures were down by about six degree crowd compared to pre-industrial levels. This maximum glaciation had profound effects on human populations, coastal migration routes, vanished beneath expanding ice and lowered sea levels. Open ocean crossings became land bridges, notably the land bridge across what is now the Bering Strait, facilitating migration into the Americas. Inland fresh water sources turned to ice or froze solid forcing seasonal mobility or the relocation of camps. Archaeological evidence from this period shows greater diversity in tool design, projectile points, bone needles, 
tailored hides for clothing, as well as the emergence of long-distance trade in raw materials such as obsidian and flint. Such innovations suggest that survival during the last glacial maximum depended not only on physical endurance, but also on social networks knowledge sharing and the early seeds of cultural complexity. The fourth phase, a series of events collectively termed Heinrich events, occurred around 16,000 years ago. During these episodes, large armadas of icebergs calved from the Laurentide ice sheet entered the North Atlantic, releasing enormous volumes of freshwater into the ocean. Estimates place the freshwater influx at hundreds of cubic kilometers over centennial timescales. This sudden dilution of seawater disrupted oceanic circulation patterns, particularly the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, and led to regional sea surface temperature drops of an additional 3 to 5 degrees C. In Europe and Western Asia, these changes manifested as intensified aridity, with rainfall patterns shifting and contributing to localized droughts. Vegetation zones shifted accordingly as steppe grasslands expanded at the expense of woodlands. Early human groups already pushing the limits of glacial survival had to contend with the unpredictability of resource availability gatherings of wild cereals and nuts, became intermittent riverine fish stocks fluctuated, and terrestrial prey herds changed migration routes. Archaeological layers from regions such as the Rhine Valley and the Levant show increased site abandonment and resettlement cycles, coinciding with Heinrich pulses, indicating that communities were tracking environmental feedback closely and relocating when local subsistence strategies became untenable. Finally, the Younger Dryas cold snap spanning approximately 12 to 900 to 11 700 years ago represents the most abrupt return to near-glacial conditions in the late Pleistocene. After a period of gradual warming at the end of the last glacial maximum temperatures plunged by as much as five de Grauex within mere decades, rivers that had begun to flow freely, refroze floodplains returned to permafrost, and steady thawing of late glacial ice reversed. For human populations in Europe, the Near East and North America, this sudden shift halted or reversed nascent developments, such as proto-agriculture. Sites that had supported early cultivation of wild cereal stands were abandoned as fields froze, and herding strategies had to revert to nomadic big-game hunting. The younger Dryas also coincided with a pronounced decline in megafaunal populations, mammoths, mastodons, giant ground sloths as climatic stress compounded pressures from human hunting and environmental change. Genetic studies suggest that human population densities dropped significantly producing genetic bottlenecks that echo in the DNA of modern populations. Only after the Younger Dryas ended did the Holocene Epoch usher in stable warmer climates conducive to the full development of sedentary farming and the rise of complex societies. Together these five phases of the Ice Age chart a trajectory of intensifying glacial conditions punctuated by abrupt climate reversals. Each phase tested the resilience, ingenuity, and adaptability of early humans, driving technological innovation, social cooperation, and the geographic expansion that ultimately laid the groundwork for the agricultural revolution and the civilizations that followed. There you have it. Five frost-bitten phases that tested humanity's grit. From the Pleistocene kickoff, to the final Younger Dryas freeze, our ancestors stared extinction in the face and didn't blink. Next time you complain about your frozen car door, remember, you're the descendant of champions who thrived in a world literally locked in ice. If you're amazed we made it through, smash that subscribe button for more jaw-dropping, today barely evolved tales. Comment below which Ice Age phase would have iced your survival. And don't forget to like this video because surviving history deserves a thumbs up. Stay warm, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next chilling chapter.